treasure hunt example. This is our input file. It's a small map, four by four. And you can see there's a couple of islands, or maybe it's one big island, it's hard to tell. But the left version is what it looks like in map mode. And on the right, we see it in a possible list mode version. The command line we're going to use while we're running this example is just hunt with example map redirected into it. Without any command line options, the captain will be using a stack, which is default. The first mate will be using a queue. And the hunt order will be northeast, south, west. Both of those default as well. Here's what our map looks like. In the upper left hand corner, you can see the map with our dots as water locations, our circles as land locations, the start location as the at symbol, the treasure location is the dollar sign with impassable train, the octothorpe. Along the bottom, I've got the search container, which by default is a queue for the first mate. And on the right hand side, you can see the sail container, which is a stack for the captain by default. We start out by adding the start location to the sail container because the start location is always water. We'll write that in here at 3 comma 3. And every time we push a location into a container, whether it's a search container or the sail container, we want to mark that location as discovered in the map so we don't try to discover it again. This is what we call seeding the container. Once the container is seeded, now we go into a loop where we look for the container and see if there's something in there. If there's something in the container, we'll pop that from the container and set that to be our current location. Since the captain is in charge, this is going to be a sail location, comes right out of the sail container. So when we do that, we set the current location to be 3 comma 3, and what we're going to do is pop that from the stack. Now we have a current location, we can start investigation. With investigation, we're going to look for new water locations that are adjacent following the hunt order. The first thing I'm going to do is look north. Looking north, we see a new location, so we're going to mark that location as discovered and push it onto the top of the stack. That's location 2 comma 3. As we look east from the current location 3 comma 3, that's out of bounds. South out of bounds. Looking west, we see a new undiscovered water location. And there we're going to mark that as discovered and add it to our sail container. And that's at location 3 comma 2. And that's an investigation loop. We continue with investigation until there's nothing left to investigate or we have found the treasure location. So the next step is the captain is still in control. We're going to remove the next thing from the sail container. And since the sail container is a stack, we're going to look at this top location on the stack. We'll cross it out and make that our current location, crossing out our old current location. That, in a sense, has us right here in this location looking to investigate. The captain attempts to investigate following the hunt order. The first thing we do is look to the north. And lo and behold, we have found land. So this is where a search party begins. and The captain turns over control to the first mate. So we'll push this new land location into the first mate's container so we can start a search. And that location is 2 comma 3 and from there we're going to mark this as having been discovered. Now with the search party ashore the first mate is in control so we're going to start our investigation loop from the first mate's point of view. The hunt order that we used before with the captain north, east, south, west is the same hunt order that the first mate will use so we're going to try to investigate from our current location during the investigation loop. So we'll start the investigation loop as we did before. We will remove something from the container. In this case, we're always pulling from the front 
of the Q. So I'll take this 2 comma 3 and set that to be our current search location. From the search location, we're going to investigate. The hunt order says look north. We see impassable terrain, nothing good there. Looking east, we find water. And since we're doing a search, since the first mate is in control, the first mate never considers water. In addition, the location has already been discovered, so nothing would happen there anyways. Looking south, the first mate finds water and continues to stay on land. And then looking west, finally, the first mate discovers new undiscovered land. So we push that onto the back of the container because we're working in a queue. And we will add that location to comma one and mark it as having been discovered in the map. That's an investigation loop. We continue again. The first mate looks to see if there's anything in the container. There is. There's one location. So we will remove that location, 2 comma 1, making it our current investigation search location. That's 2 comma 1. And we will remove that from the container as we pop it from the front. Looking from 2 comma 1, the hunt order going north to water, which is not interesting to the first mate east to previously discovered land, so we don't discover that again, south, once again uninteresting water, and then we look west, we find new undiscovered land. So the first mate will put that into the search container and mark it as having been discovered. That location is 2 comma 0. Next up, more investigation. So the first mate looks to see if there's anything in the container. There is. It's a location 2 comma 0. We go to that location, remove it from the container, make it the current search location, 2 comma 0, and begin investigation from there. Looking north of 2 comma 0 is water, not interesting to the first mate. Discovered land to the east, more water to the south, and out of bounds to the west. So the act of investigation from 2 comma 0 gives no newly discovered locations. Still ends the investigation loop, however. Next up, the first mate tries to find a new place to investigate. Goes to the search container and finds it empty. With no place to add, the first mate can return to the ship and say, this island where we put ashore does not have any treasure. So we'll do that. We'll also cross out that search location because as we leave the island, it's never going to be a search location again. I'm going to draw a little separator here to note that all of those three locations kind of happened on the first trip ashore. And it's important to note here that the things that hold these variables, whether it's the search location the sale location, or the stack, or the queue, or whatever you want to call these things, the sale container or the search container, when something is crossed out on the slide, that means that information is no longer there. It's easier than trying to erase things, but in the computer, that's in one variable. And once we remove that or write some other variable in that location, the data that was there previously is no longer accessible. All right, returning back to the ship without finding treasure, the captain will be in control again, right where we were when we went ashore, at the location 3 comma 2. When we're at 3 comma 2, we first went north, and that's when we found land, so we want to pick up right there at north and continue the hunt order to the east. East has already been discovered from 3 2, south is out of bounds, and then west is a new undiscovered water location, which is the kind of thing that the captain is really interested in. So we're going to add that to our container. That's going to be 3 comma 1. That's a possible new location, and every time we put something in the container, we mark it as discovered. And that's our investigation loop from 3 comma 2. Next step, 
find a new sale location. Taking the top item remaining in the sale container, because this is a stack, that puts us at a current location of 3, 1. Investigating from right here. Looking north from 3, 1, we find land, which is not interesting to the captain. Discovered water to the east, out of bounds to the south, and new undiscovered water to the west. So let's add that 3, 0 to the sale container. Now 3, 0 is the last thing that we investigate from 3, 1. So that we can finish this investigation loop and continue. Finishing the investigation loop, we try to find a new location if anything remains in the sale container. And there is another variable there, another value there. Put 3, 0 and set that to be our current sale location. We'll investigate from location 3, 0, which has us looking at land, not very interesting, and it's also discovered. So in either situation, it's not going to be added to the sale queue. Looking east, we find some water, but it has already been discovered, so we won't add it to the sale queue again because it's very important that we never put anything into a container more than once. That's the act of discovery, and every location can only be discovered once. Checking south from there, we see that's out of bounds. Checking west is out of bounds. So from the sale location 3, 0, nothing gets added to the sale container. This is, in fact, another dead end. We saw the first mate hit a dead end at 2, 0 with nothing else to investigate. Now the captain has hit a dead end at 3, 0. So continuing the investigation loop, the captain says, let's check the stack. Let's check our, our sail container and see if there's anything remaining. And there is. So we'll take off this next item, the topmost item left in the stack, and set that to be our new sail location, 2, 3. That means now we're sailing and investigating from here. So moments ago, we were investigating here at 3, 0. The dead end says now we're going to investigate from here. We don't really worry about the travel between locations. We just know that any time we need to find a new place to investigate, that is going to come out of one of our containers. Whether it's the search container on a search party, they go to the next location, or it's a sail container for the open ocean. If you don't worry about the travel between 3, 0, and 2 comma 3 we just go to that location and continue investigation this is similar to sailing and while you're sailing you see multiple places to go you can only go one at a time and you remember a while back I saw a way that I could sail up around this island for now I'm gonna go below the island I find that below the island is a dead end and I remember that I saw a place to go up around the island so I return back there and continue investigation so with our current sail location, 2, 3, we're just going to go into investigation again, looking northeast, south, and west. North finds new water, undiscovered, so we're going to mark that as discovered. Add it to the sail container, that's 1, 3. Looking east is out of bounds, looking south is already discovered, and looking west from 2, 3 is both land and discovered, neither of which is interesting to the captain at this point. So that ends our investigation loop. Make sure we uh, close off that sale location 3-0. Apologies there. But now we're done at 2, 3, and we're going to go and continue investigation. Captain says, is there anything left in the sale container? And there is. It's this new, new location, 1, 3. So we'll set that as the now current sale location. It's 1, 3, and continue investigating from there. Looking north, we see that 0, 3, is a new undiscovered water location interesting to the captain east still out of bounds south already discovered and now the west we've hit this impassable terrain again this time the impassable terrain was hit by the ship so what the impassable terrain is we really don't know but we just know that neither the ship nor the search party can cross it so we don't discover it we don't mark it as discovered we don't add it to any container. We just leave it alone. All right.
from 1 comma 3 we've discovered 0 comma 3 and that's all the discovery we've got so the end of that investigation loop is over and we find a new location by removing something from the sale container popping off the top of the stack as it were that sets our new sale location to 0 3 from there we're just going to investigate looking north is out of bounds east also out of bounds south is previously discovered water and now we find a new location to the west this has not been discovered and it's something that we can put a search party ashore on so we're going to retain our sail location because we may do some work from there in the future we don't actually know if we look closely at the map we see nothing will happen there but in terms of how the algorithm works we're still going to be thinking that if this next trip ashore fails we might have to check other locations so next up we put in this new location 0 2 that's our new seated container for a second trip ashore we put something into the search container right away the first mate takes over and remember when we put something into a container we always want to mark that as having been discovered so while the first mate takes over we're gonna go through the hunt order again the first mate looks north finds that's out of bounds east is water and discovered not very interesting south is impassable terrain and west is another land location so we're going to uh, oh we forgot to set our search location so let's set our search location by removing something from the queue set that to 0 comma 2 and that's where we're really searching from those were the search locations from the previous search so here we go at 0 2 we find this new land to the west Yes, it is the treasure location, but remember, the treasure location is always a land location. So, the search party finds new undiscovered land to the west, 0, 1. And every time we push new land, we're going to mark it as discovered. And then while we're pushing land, we haven't done it in the past, but we're picking up on it now. Anytime we push land, we should then check to see if the land that we pushed was the treasure location. And 0, 1 is the treasure location. So we say that at this point, there's no need to do any more investigation or discovery. The first mate runs back to the ship to tell the captain, we've located the treasure. And that is the end of the search. However, we don't really have an actual path. So, we've got a bunch of locations that have been investigated, and if we look back at the map, we see all of these check marks of places that we've been, and it's hard to tell which of those places are important places, because some of them led to dead ends, and only a few of them were on the correct path, less than half. So, as we look at it, we say, hmm, with all those check marks, I, I can tell something. I can see where I don't want to go, but I can't really tell where I do want to go. And that's where backtracing comes in. Backtracing takes advantage of the fact that since each location was only ever discovered once, it can only be put into a container once. It can only be discovered from one location. The reverse is not true, however, when we're moving forward each location might be able to discover up to four other locations. So moving forward, it's hard to say which one of these things I took. But if I look from the solution, sort of the treasure location backwards, I can see that the treasure location was inserted into a container, and that only could have happened once. So it could only have happened from one location. So looking at the map, I see... I don't have enough information to figure that out because everything that we see on the slide currently that's crossed out, we can imagine that is information that we have zero access to. We don't know anything. So the only things that are really available to us at this time are the sail location if we wanted to continue sailing, search location if we were going to continue searching, and our search container that has one item in it, which we know to be the treasure location. So with only those three pieces of information left, we have to figure out 
where could we get more information? And part of what we needed to do is, while we were doing our investigation, we actually needed to keep track of more information. And this information, as I mentioned, is where did we come from? Not where we went, because each location has multiple places where it could have gone, but each location has only one place where it could have come from. So let's start at the start and say that the start location really didn't come from anywhere. It came from start. It is start. So I'm going to mark the start location there as coming from start. I'll just put an at sign there. But every other location, I can point to where I came from. And I can do that a couple of different ways. I can do it absolutely and say, at location 2 comma 3, I came from location 3 comma 3. That's a lot more information than I need, however, because each one of these things has to be adjacent by one location. So if I say 2 comma 3, I got here by going north. I got to 3 comma 2 by going west. This was discovered by going north. While we were on land, we went west and west till we hit a dead end. We went back to the water, went west and west again till we hit a dead end. Then we jumped back to 2 comma 3 and decided to continue to go north. From there we went north, we hit the edge of the world and decided to go west and west again where we found the final location. So now if I've got this additional information with me, it turns out that I can start from the treasure location following these directions and work my way to the start location. We call this backtracing. So if I start at my treasure location and work backwards using those directions, I say I've got a west right here, and this west means I, I discovered the treasure location while moving west. So to see where I came from, I just have to invert that and travel one east. I can check how I got there, and it looks like I went west again. I'll travel east to find where I got to that location. From here, I see that I got here by going north, so I'll invert that and travel south. I will invert north again and travel south, travel south, and I end up at this start location. And so if I put all of those down, sort of writing them in reverse order, I see that I now have an actual path. For my start location, I go north three times, two wests, and I've got a solution. That's it. We have to keep track of some information. We've got a couple of containers. We've got some initial parameters that we can either read from the command line or read while we're taking in the map input itself. But this is how we do it. If we go back and try to figure out what would happen in stats mode, in stats mode, I would say that I investigated one, two, three, four, five, six, seven water locations. Seven water. I looked at one, two, three, four, five land locations. I uh, went ashore twice. And finally, this path length. You can see it's squared up here in this box. Got a path length of five. You have to do a little bit of work to keep track of these things and some other variables, but that should get you there. All right. Good luck. You can find the example files from this particular video um, at the address below. You can download them or clone them through Git. There's the example map as shown in map format and in list format, and also the outputs, including verbose, stats, and the path displayed in map mode and in list mode. And you can take those files from there and compare your work with them.